Hello and welcome to another edition of Megawatt. I'm Katie Scott. For this week's episode, Stuart Miles has been whizzing all around the country to get his hands on the latest TV releases, as well as also testing out some of the most exciting other releases from the week. Over to Stu. Rather than concentrate on technology and buzzwords like HDMI, 1080p, 24p, 100 megahertz, Philips has decided to continue its take the electronics out of consumer electronics with its latest television, the Philips Aria. Now what this does basically is rather than concentrate on technology, although it does have all the buzzwords in, so it's got very good picture, it's got 1080p, it's got 100 megahertz, etc, etc. Their focus is on their technology called Ambilight. Now Ambilight is basically where it throws out light that matches the picture from the back of the screen. The Aria takes this one step further by bringing the light out of the front of the screen from this frame here. Now at the moment we've got it turned off and it's best to see it in, in the dark so you get the full effect of the lights. So we're going to kill the lights and then show you how it works. So at the moment it's turned off, now if I turn it on you'll see that the screen has already automatically lit up and the picture manages to match the pictures on the screen. So it's green here, for example, to match the green of the hill. It's blue up here because this is predominantly sky. And if I press play, you'll see that it changes according to the picture. Very much green because there's a lot of green on the screen. And here, a really good scene is where it's green down here and the sky is very blue. And to show you how it can, we turn it off. We turn it back on. And what you also get is obviously with a white wall, you'll get the reflection showing onto the wall there. And that's because if you come up and around the back, you'll also see that the light is being shown out there, so you get a glow and a hue on the wall. Now this works really well with animation, but just to show you that it can do other things, Michael Caine and Zulu, play some HD content here. Now as you can see, it's slightly dull. You've got the red of the jacket appearing up here, some fires appearing, so all of a sudden this is becoming very orange. And it's flickering away as the image changes. Now the colour's shifted, it's very much blue at the top. Let's pause it for two seconds. We've had this for about two weeks at home, and admittedly when we first got it in, it was like, get that fairground ride out of my house straight away. However, having watched it for two weeks, we've sort of come used to it. It's not as offensive as we first thought it would be, and the light showing sort of makes the picture look bigger, even though you haven't got a bigger screen. Don't forget this might be a rather large frame, but the image itself is only 42 inches. The best way to probably describe it is very much like a subwoofer, in that once you first have it, you realise that there's lots of bass, there's lots of boom, it's all very exciting, but then you soon realise that you don't really notice that much because you just get used to it. And then you go around to a friend's house and they don't have a subwoofer on their TV and you're like, where's that bass gone? Why isn't it there? And I think that would probably be very much the same for the Philips Aria and the Ambilight technology. What's the catch? Well, it's expensive. £3,000 expensive, and if you compare that to a regular 42-inch television, you're probably looking at about £1,000 premium, if not more, for the light show fantastic. And that is the Philips Aria. It might be a bit left field from your average camera or television, but this is Samsung's latest vacuum cleaner, the Sensio range. The idea is it's super quiet, super, super eco-friendly. Eco-friendly because when ratings for vacuum cleaners come in in 2009, this is going to be an A grade. Super silent because it's on already. Yes, that's right. While I've been talking, we've been able to do some hoovering in the background without you really hearing it. Why would you want that? Well, the idea from Samsung say is that mum or dad, being modern world that we live in, will be able to do the hoovering while the other one watches the football and not disturb the rest of the house. But have they sort of given up power for the silence? Well, it appears no, because as that proves, it's pretty powerful suck. Available £169 in the summer, that's the Samsung Sensio.
Now the picture might look rubbish to you, but wearing these wonderful magic 3D specs, I'm seeing three-dimensional images here. So I get the golf, the, the lady cheering, uh, this is quite close, that's quite far in, in, the, in the distance. It's a real, it, it's pretty cool from a perception point of view. And this is Samsung's latest innovation for the television, 3D television, who would have thought it, hey? Basically, what they're doing is they're shipping this model, a plasma, for the same price as they are currently, but adding secretly in the background a 3D option. Now, why would you want that? Well, because it makes content a bit more interesting. Not from video point of view, although BBC is trialling uh, content with rugby just recently, but from a gaming perspective, you know, this pitch here has real depth, and I know it doesn't really look like that from your point of view, but from my point of view, wearing these, you know, that. The, the touch points, the touchdown up here is miles away from here. It really gives you impressive depth of field. How much did it kind of cost? Well, the TV is the same price as we said. If you get the little dongle on the top and the glasses, it's about £100. And there are about 30 games, mostly by the look of it, from EA. And it's available now. The Polaroid Pogo, Polaroid on the go, get it? is basically the company's digital 21st century replacement for the Polaroid picture that you used to have to shake or not shake depending on who you spoke to. The idea is this small little box is an inkless printer. Now, I know that sounds bonkers, and that's probably because it is. If we open it up, inside there's a little papers, the sort of business card size, and that's the, that's, that's the inkjet there. It's the, the thing there. Basically, it works with thermal printing, so it creates a massive amount of heat ignites crystals on the paper itself and then they turn into magical colors that you've predetermined by taking a photo. Now the great thing is as well as this is Bluetooth enabled, comes with a battery that's capable of taking uh, printing 15 photos and all you have to do is take your mobile phone with Bluetooth, press the button, so we're going to go options, we're going to go send, we're going to go Bluetooth, you can see here just so we can show that we're not cheating, we press the send button, so that's initializing. It's printing. And then what happens is transmitting through the air, the excitement of Bluetooth that it is. And eventually, we should, it started blinking at us, we should start seeing some action coming out the other end. You can feel the tension in the air. Now the whole process takes about a minute from camera to printer. There's a PixBridge option, so if you want to connect your digital camera in so you don't have to use the mobile phone. And it's all pretty neat in the end of the day. It's uh, portable, cool. The photos themselves come in packs of 10. They cost $2.99, which is a tiny bit expensive. It's about 30p of print, but you do get the portability to boot. There we go. It's dry. It works. It's And the best thing about it, is each of the pictures have, if I can get the sticky back off the back. A stickers, so you can slap them anywhere. And that's it, and that's the Polaroid Pogo inkless printer. Toshiba might have launched a load of new televisions, however, the thing that's caught our eye the most is this concept design. Now, ignore the frame completely. What you're looking at is the picture. Basically, it's the idea it works very similar to upscaling DVDs in that it takes a standard definition feed, a signal, and then upscales that to high definition. Now, they've got it demoed here, and as you can see with the water, for example, it's a lot clearer than there, or the flamingos. Look at the uh, birds' feathers there compared to the birds' feathers here. Now the idea, this is going to roll out into the flagship models and it basically means that if you've got a high definition television with a standard definition feed, which most of us have, you'll actually be able to get a better picture quality all round. That's it for this week. We hope you've enjoyed the show. In the meantime, why not check out my daily news show on Megawatt? And if you're watching this on a podcast, why not visit www.megawatt.tv where you can also see the episodes in the past and everything else from quick reviews through to what we love and what we hate from the world of technology and gadgets. Thanks for watching.